What's up, everybody? It's Josh. Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk about Kenobi, which is a super hyped Star Wars show, probably growing in hype as we hear more and more about it from rumors and leaks and stuff like that. And slight spoiler warning, because I do want to get into some of the recent leaks and rumors about the show. I've talked about this in some streams. I've talked about some of this stuff with Star Wars Theory on our show Monday night, but there's new information out there as well. And so I want to get into some of that right now. So Let's begin with this, which is brand spanking new, just came out from LRM. It comes on the heels of many other reports about characters showing up in Kenobi, but they're talking about Agent Callus from Star Wars Rebels coming in to Obi-Wan Kenobi. Now, I think this is pretty cool. I like the Callus character. I really liked Star Wars Rebels. I know some Star Wars fans feel whatever about Rebels. I thought it was a great show. And Callus is a really interesting character. Now, this will be, according to this report here, at a moment in time when Callus is at the height of his sort of imperial reign. He's like just, you know, the boss dude out there working for the Imperial Security Bureau. He's very good at what he does. And the Imperial Security Bureau was kind of like this arm of the empire that would watch what was going on in the galaxy from sort of an intelligence perspective, kind of like an NSA. Uh, for the Empire, which is pretty sick. But yeah, that is essentially the group that Callus belonged to. There's a couple other things that we know from his past that we could see at this time because this will be before Star Wars Rebels, kind of right before he goes to smush out the rebellion on Lothal. Number one, there's a moment in his history where he fights Saul Guerrera on Onderon, and I think we could see something like that in the Kenobi series, but I think it's actually more likely we would see the genocide of the Lasad on the planet Lasan. This was something that haunted Callus, something that drove a huge wedge between him and Zeb, who is a person of the Lasat race, one of the last remaining after this genocide, or at least at the time, that's what we think. And Callus and Zeb kind of become friends and close, and then Callus comes to really feel ashamed for taking part in that genocide. And I think that could be a really interesting moment, because the Kenobi show is going to be exploring just how dark the Empire is becoming, and how crazy it is out there in the galaxy. And a character like Callus is really a great character to focus on these kind of events and have this kind of a genocide thing happening here. It ties to Rebels, sets up the evil empire, gives us more context to this character. I'm all for it. Now, this also means that, yes, the connective tissue is strong with this one, and Kenobi, just like Mando Season 2 and just like Bad Batch right now, seems to be really amping it up on the connective tissue into tying to other canon Star Wars material. Okay, now let's shift into a few other things that have been said about Star Wars Kenobi show recently. I'm looking at another article by LRM, but they're sort of backing up some stories that Jordan Mason was talking about on Cinelinks, and and it's crazy. Okay, so first of all, you're going to get C-3PO and R2-D2 in the series. More connective tissue tying to prequels and OT trilogy. Just more juice, more fun. But they are also backing up the report that Sung Kang will be the fifth brother, a, an inquisitor in the Kenobi show. And you're going to get Leia Organa, a big Leia appearance in the show. And the thing that's pretty wild is that apparently Leia... And something to do with her is the sort of catalyst for the whole big story. That is essentially what will likely take Obi-Wan Kenobi off of Tatooine. Now, this is pretty crazy for a number of different reasons. It's really amping up the quality of the Kenobi show. Now, guys, we know that just like Rogue One and just like Solo, a Star Wars story, there was problems behind the scenes for Kenobi, okay? I remember talking about it when it was going down. A lot of people trying to act like there wasn't problems with those scripts. They rewrote the whole thing, basically remade the show, took a lot of time off, and now they're finally getting back to it. The show that we appear to have now seems way cooler and way more hype but also more fan servicey and so i know some star wars fans are not feeling all this kind of stuff they're worried about c3po and r2 d2 being in there they're worried about darth vader and obi-wan having a fight but regardless of all of that it seems like that's the direction they're going kenobi is looking to be a massive deal they're not just going to do a kenobi show they're doing the kenobi show 
putting in everything but the kitchen sink, a ton of connective tissue to all kinds of other stuff within Star Wars. And I personally love that this will be about Leia. This will have something to do with Leia and her being in danger, perhaps her being connected to Vader being uncovered or something like that. And that is what essentially will take Obi-Wan off the planet. Love it. I'm here for it. Now, the last thing that I want to get into here is basically just talking about where I'm at with this whole Star Wars thing. What do I think is going on behind the scenes? I know I haven't been doing a ton of Star Wars content over here, but I'm still very positive on what is coming for Star Wars. This mostly has to do with Dave Filoni, his new position, and a lot of the rumors we're hearing about just more and more connective tissue. So the Mandalorian season two really seemed to sort of jump into like this hyper drive state where there were so many things from Rebels coming. Ahsoka, Bo-Katan. We also got Boba Fett back. It was just like fanboy dreaming and then it ends with Luke Skywalker. So really crazy and it showed a total turn and a pivot sort of into fan service okay on top of that again it's all about that connective tissue it's all about that canon and it's all about dave filoni now really guiding that in what i believe to be a much more hands-on role and i think we're seeing the result of that in a lot of these rumors and leaks i do believe now and i didn't before that dave has some kind of purview or something to do with what is going on in the kenobi show i'm sure he will was probably asked of many other shows what he thought about things. I'm sure in the sense of consultant, he was always there when Disney needed him, but now with his new position and just, just I'm reading in the tea leaves here and I'm maybe getting a little too hyped, but I'm believing that the reason we didn't get the May the 4th announcements this year, the reason Star Wars has been kind of quiet is because now with Dave more at the helm and with more focus on what they actually want to do with all these projects moving forward, they they have begun to change things behind the scenes, and I expect that all of the live action stuff, including Andor, which I also think is going through sort of a remake, both Andor and Kenobi were technically shows that were announced way before the Mandoverse or the Filoniverse, I think, became a thing. They were announced before The Rise of Skywalker even came out. But I'm telling you, I strongly feel that both of those shows have been changed massively to more properly align with the new Star Wars vision, which will lean heavily into fan service, heavily into connective tissue, and actually following through on canon promises and the fun that you can have with canon. And it really does seem like it's going to happen in every single show. I think you could see Saw Gerrera versus Callus with those actors actually in Andor. I think the live action uh, Callus, who, by the way, let me just show you this, too. I guess we're just going to Spoiler Town USA here. But let me show you this. This guy, Rupert Friend, this, Jordan Mason is sort of teasing out that this will be the guy that is Callus. And I think this guy's signed for multi-stuff. I think he's going to be in Kenobi. Why wouldn't he then show up in Andor? You know what I mean? Why not? And then why not have him show up way later as an older man in the future stuff? I just think they are really and truly doing what Marvel did with a lot of their connective tissue and sort of trying to amplify the value of a singular piece of Star Wars content because it connects to everything else, sort of redoubling down on that promise of canon, but getting away from the story group and maybe just letting the movie writers really create what's going forward and instead having a guy like Dave Filoni work closely with all the creatives to make sure they have one singular vision for this canon and I am here for it. So that's kind of what's going on with these reports. A lot of hype for Kenobi, man. I think that is going to be a fantastic show. I look forward to it. I love the Callus character, so I'm super freaking excited that he is back as well. I love Agent Callus in Star Wars Rebels. You know, at the end of the show, he becomes hat, hot Callus, and that was a funny thing in the fandom. I, I just think that it's a really fun character. Seeing Inquisitors, right, that being developed by the Empire, while also possibly being able to see the ISB and what agents like Callus are doing, you're getting sort of a full look of all these different crazy institutions that the Empire is devising and how it helped them to consolidate their power. It's really fun stuff as a Star Wars fan, so I am here for it. So there's all the reports, some speculation about what I think is happening with Star Wars overall. And maybe we'll get some big announcements at Celebration next year. 
Those are my thoughts. Let me know what you think about all of these different rumors in the comments section below. And as I always say, hope you're having an awesome and a nerdy day. And I'll see you in the next video.